Okay, now we're recording. I missed that first little part, I do apologize. Um, so I use the 200 moving average to reference the trend. If we're above the 200 EMA, I'm only buying the market. If we're below the 200 EMA, I'm only the selling the market on the daily charts. The 50 I use to, uh, for the strength of the trend and as well as the 20 moving average. So when price is above the 20, the 50 and 200, the best bet is I'm never selling that market. I'm only, only looking to buy them, okay? And on the flip side, when we have the 200 in a downtrend, the 50 and the two, uh, 20, and the market's just sort of bouncing between the moving averages, I'm only ever selling the market, never looking to buy, okay? Um, we're gonna go look at some charts and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Oil, perfect example. So oil um, is a market where I have been um, in and uh, I've been trading for quite some time now, buying only, obviously. Um, so I, I'll, I'll also get to questions as I, as I go, so I don't want to keep stopping so long. Um, I'm actually recording this um, webinar for you guys, uh, Alfonso. Um, so let's take at this point right here, back at the beginning. When price went above that 200 moving average, I only started looking for buying opportunities, okay? So all through here, right, all here, I've never once looked for a selling opportunity. Doesn't matter what I saw, only buying it, right? Now, the 200 moving average references the trend, where do we want to buy and where do we want to sell? And then I use the 20 and the 50 for the strength of the trend. When price is above the 20 and the 50 and the 20 and the 50 are nicely separated from each other, I'm only buying the market, right? That shows that we have a very nice steady uptrend. Okay, so the 20 and the 50 are nicely separated. We have a very nice steady uptrend. Here's where it gets a little bit choppy, right? This is where people can get confused. What happens when we get the pinch or maybe even we actually haven't had a crossover, but when we do get them crossing over, let's say the 20 moving averages crosses below the 50, right? But we're still above the 200. We're still only buying the market, right? We're not looking to sell on it, right? This already takes out a lot of subjectivity in your trading. So you can only be buying. You don't have to be going, Oh, there's a short opportunity. There's a buying opportunity. There's a short buying. Opportunity. So you know you only look for the one thing. So um, even when we start to get that little bit of consolidation period, we're only buying still buying on these dips right here. Um, and I always use the, the stochastics, right? So I'm gonna literally break down my trading system in a few easy, simple steps. I don't really use much support and resistance. I don't use patterns. I don't use trend lines. Um, I only use stochastics for oversold, right? In the direction of the trend and uptrend. These are all buying opportunities right here. That is my trend system, this whole thing right there. Simple as it can be, right? Obviously a little bit more things to it, but that's as simple as I can break it down, um, um, you know, in terms of a short sort of um, um, criteria. So, um, when we get price above the 200, 20 and 50, what we're always looking for is a pullback, right? So at this point here, we're starting to look for that pullback into the market. When we get this pullback in between the moving averages, you get these little rejection candles, right? Those rejection candles can be little doji candles. They can be little uh, pin bars. They can be anything, anything that stalls price from going lower. And from there, we're looking for an oversold position on the stochastics. And then we're looking for a bullish engulfer. So the opportunity to go long would be when price closes above that 20 moving average. You go along from there, stop loss is always goes under the last low, which would be that one in there. And you just let the market ride its trend, right? You trail that stop loss. So quickly break it down. I only look at the daily and the four hour charts. I don't go to any other charts. I don't go to the one hour. I don't use the one hour, 15 minutes. I'm not a day trader, daily four hours. So in this point here, right? When the price is above the 20 and the 50 on the daily chart, so provided price remains above that 20 moving average on the daily chart, I do not have to look at the daily chart. I just look at the four hour. The only thing I'm looking for, as mentioned already, is oversold with the rejection candles, bullish and golfer go long. Oversold here, rejection candles, bullish and golfer go long. Oversold here, that was a little bit trickier. Probably no opportunity just there yet, but this one here, bullish and golfer broke there, go long from there. It's as simple as that. 
it really doesn't get any more simple than that. Um, and my stops are always under the previous low or the previous high, okay? I'm gonna show you guys some examples of the trades that I'm currently in. Now, before I share the screen of my trades I'm in, please understand that this is not a signal. Don't just copy this trade because I have my reasons for taking it. I lose trades just as much as the next guy, but I also have winners, right? So don't just copy my trades just because of the sake that I'm in them. So if you take this example right here. We're in the uh, downtrend, 20, 200 moving average, 20 in the 50. This is your New Zealand, daily chart, okay? We pull back into a resistance level right here. All right, price has been down, we've come back. We show two days of rejection right here, right there, before we start to get some bullish momentum. Now, because we're below the 20 moving average on the daily chart, we only look at the four hour. So then that's together, you know, the daily for this. So. This morning, when I it was my, my morning, my time when the market opened, which is 8 a.m., um, price was about this point right here. So I forgot which exactly which candle it was, but I decided to sell simply because we had the pullback, right? Market came down, pullback into the resistance level. We had nice rejection candles right here, right? Big fake out, bearish engulfer there. Unfortunately, I would have taken it on Friday. Had I seen it, I didn't see it on Friday. I was happy to take it on Monday, which is today. Sorry, take it yesterday. Um, so I entered here, stops above the previous high, which is that high right there. Now, big mistake lots of little traders do is they have two tight stop losses, right? So you might enter the market here, stop loss there. Really big mistake in my opinion, because you always have that chance of being whipsawed out before the market continues back down in your direction. Um, we're not doing market reviews, Alfonso. I'm just doing education stuff today. I'm not going to go through a bunch of markets and do that sort of stuff. We do that in the VIP members, uh, membership webinars. Um, but for this one, solely education. Um, I want to teach you guys about my trading style, how I trade, all that sort of stuff. Um, so the reason I took that trade was simply because of that. We had the pullback into resistance, rejection candles, big push here. Fake out, big bearish and golfer, overbought stochastics, right there. We also had divergence happening. So we had the, the highs there, the lows coming in there. And, you know, that was enough for me to want to take the trade. Um, stops, of course, like I mentioned, always above or below the previous high or low, whichever trade you're direct, uh, trading going. So for this one here, because the high was there, if you look to the left, the net last high was here, right? Market came down, made a little high. That's where I want my stop loss. Lots of people go, well, that's a very big stop loss, but my targets will make up for that. So my targets are down here at, um, actually that's, uh, yeah, sorry, that's right. The targets down here for, um, so it's about a 160 pip stop loss for a 300 pip target, okay? so. As I mentioned, I'm not a day trader, very much long-term. I looked to hold trades for a couple of weeks, um, sometimes months. My longest trade being on the currency pair, uh, 11 months. And that was just a very nice trend, just didn't stop. So I just kept holding it. Um, so we'll move on to another pair. I'm also in US dollar Swedish crown. So I took this one based on, again, very nice downtrend. So all through this point right here, all right? I just want to highlight this because we're under the 20 moving average up until there. So take note of this highlighted area that we're under the 20 moving average on the daily chart. At this point, all through here, I would have just been, well, I was just sitting on the four hour chart, looking for the pullbacks and overbought. So pullbacks, sold here, overbought, selling here, overbought, selling there, overbought, selling there. Obviously I didn't want to work out. Um, and then here, at this point here, we started to move above that moving average on the daily chart at this point, at the end of that highlighted area. So then when we go below, uh, when we go between the 20 and the 50 on the daily chart and price closes right there, as you can see on the daily chart, we only see it on the daily chart and we only look for daily opportunities to take the trade. So obviously there, right? This one would have been a very painful one, but you know, had you had your stops below the previous high, 
which uh, yeah, well, high um, would have been there. So it would have been come down into profit, would have come up, almost hit stop loss, and would have come back down into profit. Bit of a roller coaster that one. Um, so moving on, why did I take this trade? So I took this trade because, well, one, we broke out from, uh, again, I'm not massive on, on patterns. I don't use patterns. I don't use uh, trend lines at all, but we do have that flag happening right there. Okay, we have that little flag pattern, right? We're in this little bit of a channel. Price broke out right there. I'm not a breakout trader, but price broke that channel. Um, we're below the 20 moving average right there. I was happy to go on the daily chart, uh, the four hour chart. We had this nice big pullback on the four hour. We saw the market come down. I decided to sell and look to get short from that. Four hour, as you can see, a nice wide stop loss. Now, again, my stop loss is up here. Why is it not there? Because I'm prepared for the market to sort of come back before it comes back into my favor. Um, lots of reasons why people get stopped out so quick on trading is because, you know, very tight stop losses, trying to go for those really big rewards, tight stop losses. Sometimes that's really not the best idea in trading. It pays to have a wide stop loss, give your market room to breathe, then you're going to be crying about any stop hunts and that sort of stuff. You're just going to be going with the market. I should turn analytics off for everybody so you can't actually draw my screen. I know it happens. Um, and again, targets for this one um, are all the way down. And this is on the weekly chart. So um, about 400 pips to the downside on the weekly. So as you can see, um, that's the daily, you know, long-term targets to the downside. And it's very, it's as simple as that. My trading system is overbought in the direction of a downtrend, rejections, bearish engulfer, or bullish engulfer for the uptrend. All right, some chat coming through. Let me just quickly read this. Any questions here? Where will we be able to find the recording for this call? Um, Nick, I believe Julie will link the music subscribe to him. Yeah, cool, great, thanks. Okay, cool, I'm just, cool. All right, um, catch up in the chat. Um, all right, so moving on to another market. Um, I'm actually in CAD Yen already from and we actually took this one in the live webinar. Actually, last week, um, we took about eight trades. No, not sorry, not last just last week, but in the last couple of weeks, we've taken about eight trades in the live webinar. All eight trades are currently still running. All eight trades are still very nicely in profit. Um, so I took this trade right here during the webinar, um, one of the webinars anyway. Um, we basically, we came up here we came back to retest the support level right there. Bullish engulfer, I bought it there. Um, stops for this one were down here. Take profits are all the way up into these levels here. So you can see it's about 238 pip target to the upside. Price is very well reaching there. Um, you know, it's, it's shooting up right now. So um, hopefully everybody that took this with me is still holding it. Um, would be about... 100 pips in profit at the moment, 100 and some pips in profit. Um, but um, why did I take this trade? Again, it was very simple. Right, price was in an uptrend above the 20 move, uh, 200 moving average. We had this high marked out. Price broke through. At this point, we we're waiting for a pullback. We got the pullback, oversold, bullish engulfer, decided to go long. Um, and surely enough, it, it worked out pretty well. Um, so, that was one trade we took in the webinar um, last week. We also took Euro dollar, I believe. Euro dollar. Yeah, um, I took, yeah, Euro dollar and Aussie dollar. So we bought Euro dollar at uh, 1.20484. So why did I take this trade? Well, um, at, again, at this point here, uh, we were basically sitting on um, the four hour chart. So take note of the highlighted area, right? At all this point, we'll buy the dips on the four hour chart, right? Buying, just buying those dips, had a nice little run. At the end of this highlighted area right here, if we look at it on the daily chart, you can see that price goes below the 20, uh, 20 moving average and closes there on the daily chart. So at that point, we'll only sit on the daily chart and we're only waiting for overbought opportunities in the daily chart. So price comes down, right? Here, I did take this one. I got stopped out on it though, but that's okay because I didn't. I ended up taking this one here at the support level right there, bullish engulfer, and now that one's um, sitting in a little bit of profit. Our targets for this one are all the way up at 1.25. Uh, 
So I took this trade um, as well in the webinar. My stops, I don't, it's not on this account, so I can't really remember the exact stop loss, but um, I think it would have been down there somewhere. Um, and take profits were up, uh, up here. So I always go for minimum one to two as well, one to two risk reward. Um, minimum 150 pips, go from there. You can't hear anything. Um, can everybody else see me? You can hear me? Okay. Um, he might have to click, click dial in audio on the Zoom call. Um, so yeah, look, we took this trade based on the daily, right? We tested the support level right there. Bullish engulfer, oversold stochastics, you know, and we go from there. Um, we also took Aussie dollar, um, which is going very nice as well. We took Aussie dollar on that engulfer there, which is about 100 pips in profit at the moment. Um, so Aussie dollar, my targets um, are set up at 80 cents. All the way up here. So took this trade, stops were below there, that low there. So it was about 180 pip stop loss, 440 pip target, give or take a few. Um, and you know, again, long-term trade, let it ride out. So there are a few trades I took um, in the last couple of days. So again, why did I take this trade? I can't just tell you guys and not explain why I took it. So this was a basically a very, um, this was a textbook setup for my trading system. Um, uptrends, again, notice that price is above the 20 moving average all in this point right here. At that point, back in December and you know January, you would have just been sitting on the four hour, uh, buying those dips on the four hour. When price at this point right here, closes below the 20 moving average, you only sit on the daily chart, right? And then at this point here, We've got the rejection candles, rejection candles. All we need to see is price close above that two, uh, 20 moving average on the daily. Sure enough, we got that. Price um, is still continuing up in our favor, right? Um, yeah, this setup was absolutely beautiful. Um, textbook, should have risked 100% of my calendar, but you know, a little bit risky. Um, so that was another setup we took, right? And it's, it's, it's the exact same setup on every single trade that I take, right? A lot of traders go wrong is where they, they don't define themselves as a trader. So I always say, um, I go over it a lot in my webinars, is when you decide you want to be a trader, when you want to take it seriously and professionally, how do you sort of, you know, what kind of trader I want to be? There's so many different ways to trade. There's day trading, scalping, counter and trading, trend trading, um, momentum trading. There's everything out there. There's too much to choose from. How do you choose, right? I always tell people it just comes down to your personality type. Me, I'm a little bit of a lazy trader. And that means I, I don't like to spend a lot of time in front of the charts. 45 minutes a day and I'm done. So I start my day at 8 a.m. when the markets, um, the daily rolls over. I'm, by, I'm done by 8.45 and I don't have to come back till tomorrow at eight o'clock. Um, I don't like to sit in front of my charts and, and look all day. Um, again, with trading, I'd probably take five to 10 trades a month, right? Um, no more than five to 10. If I take more than 10 trades in a month, it's an extremely busy month for me. Um, actually, this month's been very busy already. Um, I've already taken six this month. Um, so, you know, it's, um, it's um, you know, very much uh, my style. My style is long-term trend trading, um, never going against that trend. Um, yours might be day trader trend trading, you know, following the one hour, 15 minute chart. So what I always say is, you know, to people is, you know, um, I get the question a lot is they get confused on how they should be trading, what style they're trading should be. Comes down to you, grab a pen and pad, just write down on paper, your personality traits, right? I'm a patient person, I'm, you know, I'm very disciplined, I'm, you know, all this sort of stuff. Um, pick two time frames, right? Mine's the daily in the four hour, right? Yours could be the four hour, one hour. So meaning you reference the trend on the four hour, and enter on the one hour or one hour, 15 minute. So you use the one hour as your trend time frame, like I use the daily and the 15 minutes for your entry, right? It doesn't matter. Just pick what you like to do. Um, and from there, pick what um, style of trader you want to be. Trend trader, counter trend trader, um, you know, uh, range bound trader. But don't go one day I'm a trend trader, the next day I'm a counter trend trader, one day I'm swing trading, the next day I'm day trading that's gonna cause too much confusion. Um, so I always say just, you know, it's, it's very hard, but be very strict with what you wanna do. Um, 
because I trade the daily the four hours, I don't have to spend a lot of time in front of the charts. So I'm not going to be sitting here all day on the 15 minute going, mm, you know, maybe I should just take that. I may see some really good setups on the 15 minute chart, but that goes against my trading rules and my trading setups and all that sort of stuff that I, you know, um, I don't do. So from there, what you have to do as well is pick your setups, right? I have one setup that I look for and it's that oversold, rejections, bullish engulfer. That is the only setup that I'll trade, right? Obviously, you know, the breakout retest, all sorts of stuff, um, which is the same anyway. Um, and then you just have the normal trade ones, but you, you just have one setup and you trade that one setup. You don't need a different, you know, a thousand different reasons to, um, uh, uh, hang on, sorry, I'll read that in a second still. Um, I won't um, have a thousand reasons to enter a trade. It's just more so one setup, it's all you need. Steel effects, what about swing trading with smaller account size? How to have wide stop loss with a small account? Of course you could use very small lot size, but at the point of profit it will be very minimal. So I always say, to, forget, forget the money, right? If you're still learning how to trade, you should not even be thinking about money. You should be thinking about percentages, right? If you can gain a percentage gain of 10% per year, you're gonna find money as a trader, whether it's through a pop firm, whether it's through employment at a firm, whether it's through investors, right? Um, too many traders will go, you know, well, I've only got a thousand dollar account. I don't want to make 20% return because that's really not much worth it in, you know, in a, in a year's work. But 20% return on a thousand dollar account is the same as a 20% return on a hundred thousand dollar account. Right. So once you take away the money concept in trading and you think in terms of percentages, it gets a little bit better. If you had a thousand dollar account, right? If you had a $1,000 account and you started with a $1,000 account this year, and at the end of the year, that account was had a, let's just say an 18% gain, 180 bucks. Sure, not that great, but you presented those results to a prop firm or you presented those results to a, um, you know, a firm that was hiring traders and whatnot, you know, to manage clients' money, that they would look at that and they go, forget the money, let's look at the percentage, right? It's all about percentage gains, not about dollar gains. Um, and when you can gain a thousand, you know, when you can gain a 20% return on a thousand, you can do it on a hundred grand. You're going to find that hundred grand, right? It's, it's, um, you know, whether it's through employment, whatever it is, but when you can make money, people will offer you, um, you know, employment and that sort of stuff. And that's where you can start to get more money and, you know, uh, like all that sort of stuff. But Still, don't worry about the dollar side of things. Um, you know, you, you, you want to think in terms of percentages. And that's, you know, because it's, it's, it's a very big um, problem that a lot of people do is they think about dollars. Um, so pretty much, you know, $1,000, right? If you spend the next 10 years, I know you, you want it tomorrow. Everybody wants it tomorrow. But if you have $1,000, Right, and you spend the next 10 years, this is a good little topic. We're gonna to go a little bit off topic here, but it's a good topic to talk about how 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 to grow that trading account. Okay. We need a little bit of blank canvas here. I hope you guys don't mind. Let's say you start off with a thousand dollars. Okay, and you want to get to the hundred thousand dollar mark. Okay. This is this is what I did when I when I when I became profitable, my first, I guess you could call big account was a thousand dollars. Um, and I sit there and go, all right, cool. What's other ways I can grow this account? Obviously compounding, you know, let's say 30% rate per year, whatever it was, sometimes 20, sometimes 40, all that sort of stuff. That compounds into there. Also me each month adding money to my account, right? So each month I'll add an extra $500, right? And from there I go, well, how, how else can I add more money? I've got a side job, right? Get a side job, more income, add to that account as well. You do that for four years, right? You'll be very, very um, surprised at how quick you can grow a trading account, right? Compounding at, let's say, 20 or 30% rate per year while continuously adding more money to your account, right? And I know that can be very hard for people, but it can be a little part of, of you know, depends where you can save money, right? It, it might just be, you know, um, instead of buying lunch, you just save that money, $20, and just, you know, I want to put that in my account instead. Right, just lots and lots of little things like that. They do add up, right? So I ended up um, 
you know, just by doing that sort of stuff, I was, at, you know, boosting my account by an extra five grand a year um, and that sort of stuff. And then, you know, obviously um, um, I had a good job at the time and that sort of stuff, but, you know, had good income, but um, that's off topic. But, you know, there's lots of different ways you can grow an account when you know how to make money. But the simple fact is most people um, here that are learning how to trade don't know how to trade yet. So there's no point in trying to make money yet. Learn how to make the money and then make the money. Worry about the money after, just learn the craft first, right? So, you know, it's, um, most people try and do the opposite. They wanna make money while learning. Doesn't really know how it works, unfortunately in trading. All right, so let's get a couple of setups that I'm currently looking for, what I'm gonna be looking for, where I'm gonna be trading and that sort of stuff. Um, and by the way, I can do a whole webinar on how to grow a trading account, um, you know, to a hundred thousand dollars within say five years time, four years time, five years time on how I did it on how, you know, I know other people have done it and that sort of stuff. I'll do a whole webinar on the presentation. I will obviously prepare for that. Um, so anyway, you're a Japanese yen. I'm looking to buy this market. Okay. I want to buy it, um, back up into these levels up here. Okay. That's the next sort of, uh, resistance level, as you can see all through there. So when I look for targets and, and, and that sort of stuff is I don't care too much about support resistance in terms of what's around price. When I look at the chart, most of the time it's pretty well naked like this. All I go is where price at now, which is here, where's the support below that, which is there, where's my target. And I always look for the big support and resistance levels because price always wants to get back to big support and resistance levels, right? So I don't go for little targets, like little resistance levels like that. They don't bother me. I'm going for those sort of the big ones that stand out, right? These points were right there, right? That stands out as you can see, you know, one, one, as you can see those points right there, that stands out to me, right? Anything between that, doesn't really worry me. So all these little points in there doesn't worry me, right? I'm not looking for, well, I just didn't mean to take that off. I don't look for, um, you know, the four hour chart, for example, these aren't support and resistance to me. You know, they're just really not worth my time. Right? I don't want my chart looking like a zebra crossing. Um, you know, I kind of just ignore that. I just go, where's, where's price at now? The one below that and my target. My target is always the big levels in the market. As you can see, uh, let's say Euro, yeah, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, actually, um, CAD yen. CAD yen was the only support I cared about at the time was when price was here, it was the one below it, which was my entry and my target. And my target was this one here. Why did I pick that point and not this point here, right? Because that is also a resistance level right there. Price wants to get back to that resistance level and will get back to that resistance level. Price always and will get to those big resistance levels. All these little ones between the big ones are just little stalling points, right? Before the market continues in the direction. So price might get to that level there. Well, it didn't, it just blew right past it, but have a little bit of a stall before it goes back up. So I'm always looking at those big levels, right? They're the only one, the big, Trend turning points is all I like to call them. So, um, you know, when I look at the uh, Euro Yen, that's what I look for on this market, right? So my entry is gonna be down this four, I'm gonna look at the four hour chart. Again, so we're above the 20 moving average, the 50, we've broken past here on the daily chart. If the price, um, if the market closes above the daily chart in five hours and 26 minutes, then I'm gonna be looking at the four hour chart for a pullback. I want to see a pullback into the support level. I want to see an oversold stochastics. I want to see some rejection candles. Again, there's rejection candles like little doji candles. And then I want to see a bullish engulfer. And that's my ticket to go long. That's all I'm looking for. Don't need to look for anything else from that. Um, Dave, Joe, as a beginner, would you suggest focusing on a few pairs, two or three? Absolutely. Um, if you all need to, so I, I trade every, I trade over. 70 to 80 different instruments but in saying that i've been trading for 13 years i know what i'm looking for very quickly i can just go scan the markets and you know my style of trading 
takes me very quick to see a setup or not. For instance, when I'm scanning the markets, I'm like, yeah, cool, there's a setup, right? Um, I'm not gonna show you guys now, like, but I'll quickly scan. Yep, that's one I'm looking at. Yeah, that's a, there's a downtrend there. Um, probably not, a little bit of ugly price action there. Um, but this is how quick I scan the setup. So I can go past trade uh, markets very quickly. So Aussie, New Zealand, not interested in it, right? It's not trending. Moving averages are all flat, nothing there for me. Aussie yen, sweet, that's trending. Where do I want to enter? Well, maybe support level, wait for pullback. We'll figure that out later. Very quickly to go through my channel. Oh, I always say, if you can't up? see set up, hello. Um, if you can't see a setup within the first five seconds of looking at a chart, it's not there, right? Might be a little bit extreme, but hey, you should, you should know the setups that you look for, right? I don't do much analysis in my markets, in, in my trading. It's very, uh, very quick. So anyway, to answer your question, Dave, it would be a good opportunity to um, pick two or three, one or three pairs or five pairs or something like that. Um, don't trail your stop losses. Um, that's a good point. I also asked about, um, no, I don't trail stop losses. Um, I don't set stop losses to break even. Um, one or two things are going to happen in my trading, right? When I enter the market, let's go to this example, right? I will not touch this until the stop loss or the take profit is hit. Until then, it will do whatever it wants and take as long as it needs. It can come down, it can come back up, it can come down and come back up to here. I will not touch it until that stop loss is hit or the take profit. Why? It is very hard, but it comes down to the simple fact is you can't mess with the probabilities of a trading system. When I back tested my trading system like eight years ago, 10 years ago, or however long it was, I back tested it based on um, setting and forgetting. So I take a trade and it hits a stop loss to take profit. I know the results from that back testing. I know how many consecutive losses I've had in the back testing. I know how many um, consecutive winners I've had, the drawdown peaks, all that sort of stuff. Um, so if I start to mess with that, in live markets. So for instance, you know, let's say this one starts to go against me, right? I'm like, you know what, just cut it. Well, that straight away messes with the probabilities of my trading system. My, my win rate might have just become worse. My risk reward has become worse, all that sort of stuff. So when you can just let it go, accept the risk, because quite frankly, when you take a trade, you should have accepted the risk as a loss already, right? It should already be a loss. Never sit there and enter a trade going, Oh, I'm winning this one. That's a sure way to get um, bummed out and, you know, continue losing. So whenever I take a trade, I accept that I've already lost it. That way, if it does come up and lose it, I'm like, cool, all right, I was prepared for that. And if it hits take profit, I'm like, sweet, party time, all right? Wasn't expecting that, but you know what? Sometimes I hit take profit, sometimes I hit stop loss. Um, so you have to just be willing to hold the trade until it happens, right? It comes to the next point is having your maximum um, pain threshold. Now, my pain threshold is 2.5% of my account, right? So I risk half a percent of my capital per trade and I have a maximum of five trades open at any given time. The maximum of 2.5% exposed to the market at any given time. If I lose all five trades, I only lose 2.5%. That's my pain threshold. In dollar figures, that's all I'm comfortable losing. If I was to start to lose four or 5% of my account, let's say I have a 1% uh, risk per trade and five trades open, that's 5%. Sure, it doesn't sound like a lot, but my pain threshold in terms of dollar figures, I'm not comfortable with that. So I keep my pain threshold around half percent risk per trade, 2.5% maximum exposure, right? And I've it's been a very long time since I've lost more than five in a row. Um, so, you know, so far, I haven't really gone over that sort of 2.5%. Uh, but in saying that, I'm always prepared for it. So whenever I do enter a trade, I go, okay, cool. Um, I'm, I'm going to lose this half percent right here. Right. I'm, I'm prepared. I'm preparing myself to lose that. And, and that's what you have to do as a trader, right? You can't sit there and enter a trade assuming going, oh, yes, sweet. I'm going to make money on this one. I'll go party tomorrow and I'll call all my friends. Hey, battle win this trade. We're going to get a party. And then you lose, you feel bummed out. Just accept it as a loss, right?
comes down to understanding what trading is really like, right? Um, now I'm not gonna, you know, I don't want to like name shame or anything like that, but trading is really not what you see on Instagram. I've been trading for 13 years and trust me, every single professional trader I know, and I know some very professional traders, you would look at them, you wouldn't even tell that they're a trader. That does not one of them doesn't look like anyone on Instagram. That is fake trading. And that causes, uh, you know, to me, that causes a lot of the, the fear in traders that they want to get to that level of, you know, the, you know I'm not going to go off topic here, but, you know, the, the cars and the, you know, the big profits and all sorts of stuff. And, and trust me, you can live very comfortably as a trader, but, um, you know, it's hard to get to that point. You have to be humbled, right? You have to sort of humble yourself first and go, okay, money doesn't come quick in trading, right? Um, it doesn't come quick when you're trading. As you can see, I'm expecting to hold this trade for a couple of weeks. Um, so that's a very slow trade. Um, but, you know, it's, you know, and I'm sure a lot of you guys, if you like Nick's stuff, then you probably, you know, here for a reason because, um, you know, we're not like that here. But uh, you agree. Thank you for agreeing with me. At least one person agrees with me. Um, so anyway, moving on. We're getting off topic here. I do sometimes get off topic. I do apologize. So let's look at a, um, a couple other markets, all right? Let's look at dollar yen, for example, right? This one has been a little bit of a rough ride, right? Now, I haven't traded this for a long time, but I did get asked about this by uh, about my trading system, if this would be a setup uh, during the webinars. And particularly, um, I did not like it. So all through this point right here, I was only, only ever looking at selling this market. Even on this big bullish engulfer, I was still only looking to sell it. Why? Because we're below that 200 moving average. And as you can see, had you sold every overbought opportunity, you would have made some money right? just by that. Uh, except this one, right? But there's three right there. One loss doesn't matter. And then it comes to this point right here. We're still looking at only selling it, right? We're below that 200 moving average on the daily chart. Yes, it could turn around tomorrow, but as long as it remains below that 20 moving, uh, 200 moving average, still only looking to sell it. And obviously only on the daily chart, right? There's no setups on the four hour, but um, if price closes above that 200, okay, cool, sweet. I'm shifting to buying, but right now, while it's under there, only selling it still. Uh, Rashi, what advice would have if someone is starting a small account? Um, I would say don't start with fifty dollars. Keep it. Um, I don't know. Just take yourself to dinner or something. But start on demo. Um, you don't want to be starting trading with fifty dollars. You will blow. You will blow it. Um, you will lose it. So don't start with fifty dollars. Don't be scared to go on demo right? A lot of people don't want to start on demo because they fear that, you know, I don't want to get a demo because what if the week that I go on demos, I have a profitable trading day or trading week and you know, I miss out on that money, but yeah, you're just going to lose it. Um, so what I always suggest is for anyone that's still learning how to trade is start a demo account, just a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, whatever. It doesn't have to be massive and wait until you have three months profitable in a row. When you have three profitable months in a row, then go live. Um, what about what do you suggest starting with Joe to answer? Then, then what? Um, so to to ah, depends how serious you want to get. I always say, again, I tell everyone, don't start with live money. Um, yeah, I know, but Rashid, can I ask you a question though? Are you a profitable trader? Uh, not really right now. I'm getting there though. You can, you can just type. It's okay. Um, we'll just type. Um, okay. So if you're not profitable, there's no point in going live. There's, there's no point. Um, too many traders will do it because they like, you know what, you know what, if I, if I just use real money, I'm, I'm going to take it seriously. It just makes you worse. Right. When I started trading, I did the live too quick. And then my mentor, um, so my mentor, he worked for Deutsche Bank. Um, he worked for Deutsche, um, and then uh, also Barclays Capital. Another one worked for Barclays Capital. I had two at the time. Um, and, and they kind of humbled me very quickly. They said, you know, get off live, go on demo. Um, and I did that until I had three profitable months in a row. When I had three profitable months in a row, I started my first live account. Well, not my first, but my first real live account. 
um, and I didn't blow it, right? So, um, and Dave, to answer your question, I'd say $500 minimum, but don't expect to be making a lot of money either, right? $500, right? Like $2 risk per trade. You know, don't be expected to risk $30, $50 per trade. You'll blow it. Um, so you want to be very, you know, you don't, you want to think of trading as investing, right? You're not going to get rich very quick, but you want to think of it in terms of long-term aspect. A lot of you people might still be working full time. You might be students, all that sort of stuff. Don't be in a rush to become profitable. That's what stops a lot of traders from getting to where they need to be because they feel like they have to rush it. Right? I need to get there. I need to get, I need to get it next week, next year. It just keeps setting you back. Right? You don't need to get next year. You need it next in the next five years. Okay. Learn how to trade. Learn how to, uh, learn the trading systems. Have three profitable months in the row, then go live. Rashid, if I was you, I would use that fifty dollars on something like education. I would use it on you know something that can maybe help you get to that um, point right there. Um, so Nick, real wisdom right here. The real is trading this. Uh, Exactly. Yeah. Um, it, it was very humbling to me when I went from, I mean, when I started, I was just a kid, you know, I had like $500 here. And I was like, yeah, just throw it in started gambling, lots of stuff. Um, but when I sort of stopped that and I went to, you know, with my mentors and on demo and, and learn a trading system, which is, this is the trading system I've been using my whole trading career profitable trading career it, it you know it quickly occurred to me it's like how quick you can actually compound an account when you're profitable right and when you stop rushing the process and learning how to trade it all comes together right um it is different but in saying that um it could come down to a few things. Um, fact two one two two. Um, it could be: Are you over? Are you over trading on live? Are you risking more money on live? So you know, someone always says the dollar amount you want to risk. It might be one percent. You might be going, yeah, I risk one percent. But and realistically, you're not comfortable losing that one percent. You might only be comfortable losing half a percent. So I don't know what one percent of your account is, but let's say it's, I don't know, ten dollars you might not be comfortable with that, but you're comfortable losing $5. So risk $5 per trade. Um, so that could be comfortable. Uh, that could be a, a, a couple of different things, right? It could be just that simple fact that you're not really comfortable losing the real money yet. So to, you know, turn down the dollar amount that you're actually risking, right? So instead of $10 or whatever it is, go half that. And then if you can sleep at night, if your trades open and run and forget, it, forget that you're even in the trade, that's the point you want to get to. Right. So there's a lot of trades where I'll take, uh, for instance, um, I was doing the webinar today for A1 and I totally forgot that I was in Euro pound and I'd be holding that for two weeks now. Um, but it was a trade that I was just uh, hit take profit on, but I, I forgot I was in this trade. Um, so I entered this up here and then we're doing the webinar and, and I think it was about there at the time. And I was like, oh, wow, I totally forgot I was in this trade. Um, but that's the point you want to get to. Um, now, if I was risking say 2% of my account on this, I would not have forgotten about that because psychologically the dollar figure was uh, ooh, way too overwhelming. But because I'm only risking half a percent, I'm comfortable losing the half percent and the dollar figure, right? 1% risk is safe, but to me, it's not, I'm not comfortable with that. I could risk 1% on demo and yeah, not even care about it. 1% on live, I'm not comfortable with that. Even though it's a safe percentage in dollar figures, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with this. So when I took this trade here with half percent risk, stop losses up here, take profit wherever it was, it's been hit. But um, that, um, that just, you know, totally forgot that I traded. And then we'll do the webinar. I was like, hey, yeah, forgot we're in that trade. Um, so yeah, that's, it could just be that simple fact is you're not comfortable losing that dollar figure, right? Um, even though the percentage gain uh, loss might be safe, but the dollar figure is not um, in your um, brain anyway. Yes, comfortable with a risk amount is the big thing in trading, right? Not just the percentage, right? Lots of traders think that I'm just going to risk half a percent or 1%. That's my whole risk management plan. Risk management comes down to a lot of different things, right? Um, 
So risk management is not just, hey, I'm going to risk 1%. It's how much maximum exposure am I going to have? So let's say you risk 1%. Well, five trades over at any given time, I'm only going to risk 5% of my total account. Now, what happens when I lose all five trades in a row? Because one day that will happen. Cool. What are your strategies you do to cool yourself away from over trading? That's outside of the charts, right? Risk management is a whole in-depth topic. Um, it's not just 1% risk. It's how do you come out of that drawdown? What do you do when you start losing more than, more than those fives in a row? What happens when the next trades are lost, you know? What do you do then? Well, now it's time to start lowering your risk from 1% to half a percent. That's supposed to be a five, by the way. That's a five. Um, all that sort of stuff, you know? So it's it's very in-depth topic. It's the most important topic in trading um, is, is risk management. And yeah, it's not just the percentage. It's also what comfortable of dollars you're, you're, um, you're risking. So anyway, um, We'll start to wrap up here. I've been blabbering on for about 50 minutes. Um, how's everyone finding it so far? I know we kind of got off topic a little bit at times that happened, I'm sorry. Um, but hopefully it gives you guys an understanding of my style of trading. What I look for um, when it comes to setting stop losses, I always like to have that little wide stop loss. I don't like to go for those little tight ones. Again, it's always on the previous swing. So in a downtrend, right? If I take a trade here, my stop loss is there. If I take a trade here, my stop loss is there, right? Um, in an uptrend, exact vice versa, right? So if I take a trade here, my stop loss is there. Take a trade here, my stop loss is under that one, right? Always going for a minimum of 150 pips, one to two risk reward ratio. Golden nuggets, great nuggets. That's awesome. I like to hear that. Chicken nuggets are the best. Um, so yeah, look, hopefully guys enjoyed this. Um, that actually went past a lot quicker than I thought. I thought we were only about 20 minutes in, but we're about um, an hour in. Any questions? Happy to answer any questions. VJ, yeah, my, uh, my pleasure, man. Thank you. Alex, thank you. When's the next webinar? Um, ask Nick, um, Reza, Reza. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, I'm sure Nick will, um, you know, as long as you guys subscribe to the emails, you'll get the updates. Don't worry about that. Um, cool, all right, guys. Well, thanks, Joe and Nick, good stuff, thanks. All right, guys, awesome, appreciate it. Um, sorry, I forgot a little bit off topic. It's like 3 a.m. here in Australia. So I stayed up late. I didn't even have, like, I was like, I'm not even going to bed. So I just drank a bunch of coffee and I was watching like Netflix and yeah. Um, why do I use the EMA, not the um, um, MA, um, yeah, simple moving average? Um, I, I prefer how they react. They react to price a lot quicker. So they're quicker to show the trends. They're quicker to, um, you know, um, show that when the trends change, you know, all that sort of stuff. And they're just a lot cleaner on my chart as well. Um, when you look at the EMAs, they're a lot more, as you can see, very quick to react, but was the, the, the the SMA or the normal moving average might be a little bit sort of more entwined with each other at times and very, you know, it's too smooth for me. It's personal preference though. You know, you can really use whatever you want. Um, that is a big target. Uh, that is a big webinar. Um, I can do, a, I can certainly do a topic around that on the next webinar, um, but it's, it's a little bit more hard to explain on, on a quick little webinar. Um, so yeah, interesting name, 18, 30 grams, 044. All right, guys, well, we'll call it there. Again, appreciate you guys joining. Um, any questions, feel free to reach out to any of the A1 staff members, uh, whether it's Emily, Nick, um, myself, or Julie. Guys, take care. We hope to see you in the next webinar. And we hope to see you in the live room, right? Come and join us, very good there. Take care, guys, see you then. Ciao.